do you love rpgs but you're on a very tight budget especially in this economy and i have a list of some of the best indie rpgs that i found for anyone who's on a budget and still want to feel the quality story driven experiences that rpgs can actually offer but in today's episode i'll show you some of the cost effective options with some good storytelling fun gameplay or even innovative designs to their overall game for anyone who is new or old to the indie rpgs they're four of the most expensive games that are going to be on this list will be sitting around at 40 dollars retail price now at the time of me actually recording this video the steam summer sale is going on till uh july 11th so a lot of these games may be already on an even bigger sale but just in case by the time you guys actually you know watch this and before you buy it if you get past that sale i would still leave up the retail price and it would still be a budget game so let's hop right into it first game gonna be on the list is going to be crow country now crow country is a survival horror rpg that was released in may 2024 sitting at a whopping twenty dollars crow country channels the vibes of classic playstation 1 horror titles like resident evil and silent hill the story follows Mara, a young woman venturing into the abandoned Crow Country theme park in search of its missing founder, which would be Edward Crow. The park hides a very, very dark secret that there's mutated creatures that now roam the entire park. In true survival horror fashion, players explore the environment, you get to solve puzzles, and fight off these very nightmarish creatures, I would say, with a very decent backstory behind them the game does offer three modes which would be survival which basically gives you your enemies and combat a more exploration focus which is called exploration mode and of course whew, you got the hard as hell murder of crows which is the hardest difficulty now crow crunchy was generally well received for its nostalgic horror atmosphere suspenseful story and a unique blend of creepy and comedic elements however some reviews found that the combat mechanics to be a bit less polished i would say but me personally i did have a very fun time playing crow country and i pretty much can highlight crow country as a horror game inspired by classics like resident evil and silent hill it features tank controls scarce resources and as well as puzzles but with a modern twist of free aiming in the difficulty modes the unique visuals blend early 3D with a dreamlike haze, creating a creepy atmosphere, and the mysterious story unfolds through exploration, but hints at a Silent Hill-esque twist. I thoroughly enjoyed my six-hour experience praising the story, character development, and exploration. However, I will mention there are some potential drawbacks like the limited combat and most fights were fairly easy to deal with, and no monsters really gave me any oh shit moments. I went this entire game without dying at all and the repetitiveness of some of the backtracking if you're not used to games like this you're and you're a little bit more of a faster pace side, this may be a turn off to some. Overall, it seems Crow Country is a successful homage to classic survival horror with a modern touch. The past few years has seen some crazy surplus of ARPGs hitting the scene and some stayed and some flopped. From games like Torchlight Independence, Superfuse, Diablo 4, Last Epoch, and the list goes on. However, there is another challenger that steps into the limelight to help reinvent the entire genre and sink itself into the Mount Rushmore of ARPG Kings. Today's game will be No Rest for the Wicked, which is an isometric ARPG with a nice price tag of $40. Developed by Moon Studio, the creators of Ori and published by Private Division, the innovative combat system incorporates combos and completely slowing down the game unlike most ARPGs that follow a more hyper fast way of going through the levels which brings me to why i believe a lot of people will probably like no rest for the wicked the combat the exploration of the world there's you know one last thing that makes this arpg addicting is the overall end game moon studios thought to make two forms of end game which there's two given errors that can give us a challenge and reap their awards so the main overarching story of this game it changes based on the what's happening in the world. I really enjoy that. And then you also have the Crucible, which acts as the game's overall endgame, which I actually had a chance to get to endgame. And it's essentially just 
a harder variation of the main story just put into a concise little designated area to make it quite difficult I, I still have not beat the crucible since the game has came out but one thing you will notice about no rest or wicked is the devs goal is to take parts of their favorite arpgs and bring it into life essentially being a combination of many different genres as well now i did just i did just make notice of them last epoch is also an isometric action rpg that is currently sitting at 35 dollars with a focus on replayability and customization the game is set in the world of Etero, which is threatened by a mysterious force known as the void players take on a role of a given hero who must travel through time to uncover the said secrets of the void and save Etera. Now the game features five playable classes which would be Sentinel, Rogue, Mage, Primalist, and Acolyte. I currently play as the Acolyte, love them. Each class has its own unique set of skills and abilities. Players can customize their characters by choosing different skills and abilities as well as by equipping different items. Last Epoch's game world is divided into multiple different timelines. Players can travel between timelines to find new enemies, bosses, and loot. The game also features a variety of in-game content such as the monolith of fate, the arena, and the dungeons. Last Epoch is genuinely a fun ARPG and I can see why this game has so much love that it is received in the fact that it is still, it just got out of beta just not even recently of this year and it's crazy how not many people know about this arpg it has a lot of love the fans really enjoy it the devs are you know very openly listening to everyone and you know taking bits and pieces to help fine tune and perfect their game other than some small hiccups here and there overall it is a great experience and probably a cheaper version or a better version of Diablo 4. <laughs> Exploration is also a key part of Last Epoch. The game world is large and varied and there are many secrets to discover. The map is quite large at hand and especially with time travel being a huge factor, allowing us to travel at different time periods from distant futures to the distant past. And I find that's one of the biggest points of this game in the time traveling between times and you can find, you know, hidden dungeons, you can find hidden chests and many or other items. Now we take our side to the JRPG side of things, right? So we have Cross Tales, which is now the latest squad based tactical jrpg from chemco that is currently sitting at 30 dollars. it throws you into a world that has is stuck in a decade long war between a canine kingdom of ravenfurt and the feline republic of hidik with a gripping story that's playable from both sides and intense tactical combat cross tales has quickly captured the attention of strategy rpg fans players can expect an engaging story with awesome turn-based tactical rpg you can choose between two characters from the opposing nations. The two main characters are Shima Jerby, she hails from the feline nation, and the other protagonist is Felix Ahrens, and he comes from the Ravenfur nation, which is the dog nation. Even though the story can be seen as a simple cat versus dog story, the game introduces players to the experience the story from both standpoints of each nation. Cross Tales promises a narrative that is rich but with intrigue letting players unravel the secrets behind the decade-long war and mysterious third-party manipulating it all sounds quite captivating. Seeing the conflict through both canine and feet line lenses adds overall depth and encourages empathy for both sides of the war. With the intriguing story, anyone who's a fan of tactical RPGs rests easy because the combat and main gameplay focuses is reminiscent to games like Final Fantasy Tactics or even the Fire Emblem series. The turn-based battles are on a 3D quarter view stages and with each stage showcasing strategic potential. Utilizing terrain and character orientation adds another layer of complex complexity, ensuring that battles go beyond simple stat checks. Moving on, we have Eater Knights. Probably one of my favorite games from 2023 it is a rather positive game on this. It gives me a breath of fresh air every time I talk about it. Indie game is sitting at $30 and man do I love the DMC like combat and how completely fluid the game is. I love having fun moments with the characters outside of combat and if you're a fan of Persona the game has the same feeling to it as if you travel through the game's dungeons like in Persona 3 you have the Tartarus as this game's form of the dungeon but while you're trying to get to the end of the game the true gameplay is what's outside of the fun combat and the dating sim simulation part 
as we try to further our relationship and by doing that we get stronger since the game runs on the persona rules the stronger your relationship is with the character the more powerful you become like i said earlier for the price of this game has given me a better experience than most games in the past few years at a triple a price a message to studio size team you guys made a great game i cannot wait till i see what else you guys do the ending had choked me up a lot i cried so i hate you guys in a very loving way but if you guys want to enjoy such a great game is currently right now on steam and if i'm not mistaken also has a console uh, i think it's for ps5 right now or ps4 i think it's for i know it's for playstation but you guys definitely need to go check out this game but there also is another JRPG that I need you guys to also check out, which is Sea of Stars. This is a beautiful, and I say beautiful, love letter to players who wants to sit down and enjoy a good JRPG they used to when they were younger. Yes, we have games like Octopath Traveler. We have the Trial series and many more that you know that has came out within the past few years but sea of stars just has this nice soft spot that is somewhere in my heart right now <laughs> gives players a huge experience with a 35 dollars price tag or you can play it free if you want to play it on game pass within a week the game has surpassed 250,000 copies sold and a plan to make a dlc based on the watchmaker a figure who didn't get too much limelight during the overall game if you want to avoid live service games or really sit down and enjoy 26 hours or in my case 22 hours journey then i say definitely go grab yourself a copy definitely go play i went in an overall roller coaster of emotions and got attached to a lot of the characters last game i have on this list is flintlock siege of dawn this is starting to be one of my most anticipated souls light this year steam netflix had dropped us a beautiful demo and i was not expecting to get a shadow drop on the demo hell i wasn't expecting it to release this year but a44 games is an indie studio and the devs posted a lot of clips throughout last year showcasing bits and pieces of the game and the combat alone is what actually sold me a year ago now i did say this game is a souls light so it uses some aspects from souls games but it borrows from other games as well being a more linear based game with a semi open world to explore and fight more enemies and gain more loot as well now indie studios is absolutely cooking this year and proving they can hold their ground with the bigger budget games. so in today like i said flintlock is overall amazing after spending some time playing flat like this is looking to be a very awesome title for anyone who's looking for a challenge but not super heavy into being a full souls like game you also do got a cool mechanic which is the multiplier mechanic which basically is there to allow you to gain more experience points gives this game a definite more arcadey feel to it but not every game needs to be have this heavy interconnected maps or super metroidvania like I do love how the exploration and how you can approach different combat scenarios. A44 Games chose to go with a semi-open route to keep the game and feel of the atmosphere more alive instead of going heavy into the open world then it's mainly empty. You do have many, many multiple ways of traversing areas, either it's with your mobility in the air or help from Enki the God. Finlock Siege of Dawn is set to release July 18th, 2024 for only $40. And if you guys want to play the game yourself, the demo is out right now. So I definitely highly recommend to try it out. Now, each of these games demonstrates some form of bringing the love of video games back to gamers. You don't need to pay full price, 70 bucks and for a half ass experience. And you can really feel the quality and for developers to be able to be creative and not be afraid of doing new ideas. Each of these games has some cool themes and fun gameplay and overall great stories that is honestly worth the money, especially when nowadays we have to be careful when putting into these big name AAA titles, which could be a bust and gamers are lo losing overall trust and faith in some of these AAA games. If you want more recommendations of any games that I suggest watching the video here, and if you also have a favorite indie RPG, then also let me know in the comment section below, but as always, it and stay safe out there. It's been your host, Chaos DTV, here at Chaotic Inc. Signing out. Peace.